thanks for stopping by spirit and me 11 11 it's your girl stardust here to do my very very first ever karmic life path and purpose reading um based mainly on astrology here i have three different astrology charts i'm going to be giving you um information um based on what cards or of tarot fall and what houses of the zodiac for you here um this is going to be for Virgos. I'm doing Virgo specials this month. It's all about Virgos. I'm a Virgo. I'm not picking and choosing because I'm a Virgo, although it is nice to be a Virgo. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm just trying something new. So if you guys like these styles of reading, please let me know. I will continue to do more for every sign. Um, for, if you have Virgo anywhere in your chart, Venus, Moon, Sun, Rising, then um, this reading could resonate for you. But you don't have to just have um, Virgo. You can be any sign. You know, we all have all of the charts all of the signs somewhere in our charts. So going to be starting you off with guardian angel cards to see what guardian angel is accompanying you on this life journey and what karmic lessons and paths you are dealing with, right? From possible past lives here, as well as what um, energy we have here from the dark mirror oracle for you guys. We're going to focus on some things that most of us don't like to focus on, that shadow work that needs to be done here. Guys, I do have memberships right now, $4.99 for my Stargate babies. That's entry level. Um, $9.99 for my Stargazers and $14.99 for my Ascended Stars. And there's many perks and benefits to joining my channel, becoming a member over here with me. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, guys, if you need personal private readings, the information will be down below. There will not be an extended to this reading as it is a very new style. And I just need to see how you guys respond to it before I decide to go in any further. Okay. So without further ado, Spirit, can I have messages for my Virgos? Messages for my Virgos from the Guardian Angel deck. What angel chooses to be a part of Virgo's journey and accompany them on this life here in the 3D physical. Angel of love. And we have angel of past issues here. I'm going to get these right out of the book if you guys do not mind. I can go into your message without the book, but I just think it's much better when I get the book for you guys. Um, they are fairly new cards for me. I bought them with the intention of doing the life path readings for you guys. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So for your first card, Angel of Love, number 20 here. Um, the affirmations, I'll just go to affirmations because there's a lot to this and you know, it'll take more time. And if you guys, some of you like them longer, longer ratings, let me know. I can go into the whole shading for you guys, but I'm going to try to keep it as general and to the point as possible, if you don't mind. Affirmation. I am surrounded by the positive vibration of love. I attract love into my life, right? Which makes my life complete. Some of you guys have the angel of love here for you, blessing you with love in this lifetime, in this incarnation. Maybe you are reuniting with a soulmate here. I see angel of past issues here. Um, for some of you, I feel that you're working on love. You're building a vibration of love because you may have lacked or suffered that in life's past. And um, yeah, the angel of love is walking with you on this journey and making sure that you form and create those harmonious relationships and bonds with people that will fill your cup up. Um, Virgo being the natural healer of the Zodiac, right? Being very empathic, very intuitive here. I just feel like you may be sacrificing, giving more to yourself than others. So you need to work on love, self, love, and compassion as well. Card number 23, angel of past issues. So along with the angel of love, um, angel of past issues here, and if you see, there's kind of pictures here being blue in the wind. The angel is releasing doves here. That's true love. Doves made for life. Some of you guys have a soulmate, twin flame activation or connection manifest here into the 3D. Um, for some of you guys, and you're going to be able to work out and work on love situations from the past that may not have served you or your person in those past lives. I really get a strong feeling that for some of you, you made a transition into the spirit world before you and or your person was able to complete a healthy cycle and loving, fulfilling relationship. And I believe that the angel of love and the angel of past issues have both joined forces and are working together to synchronize you back with this person or soulmate because maybe both of you guys are now incarnated here into the 3d so congratulations and good luck with that as well um i am no longer stuck in the past it reads i can't change what happened in the past but i can be in control of what i welcome into my future okay some of you guys this is playing over into exactly the 3d um as i said you have 
issues that you may not want to give up here about love, about situations that didn't work, but I feel like the anger of love and past issues is here helping you on your journey, helping you to become aligned with more situations to bring you the emotional fulfillment that you so deserve. And I feel like that you truly desire in this lifetime, Virgo. Alone in the world. I like that card. So for Alone in the World for Virgo, let's read from the book. Alone in the world. Maybe you feel alone because you ain't got that cup full of Virgo. Self-love's a good way to start when we're loving on ourselves. Nothing else matters. And in that energy, you legit attract those harmonious relationships to yourself. Alone in the world reads, I made my home a cloister, my heart a chalice for the faintest breeze, and yet I stand alone. Waiting for something to come back. When we parted ways, we promised each other, I'll wait for you and I will come back. We may have used different words like it's just for a few months or a sharper pen like I don't need you. Still, we are waiting. Mind has lost hope. Body has lost memory, but our heart's still incomplete. It is shrined into a blessed feeling of longing and desire, innocence and hope, but it also embodied into a... a well of solitude and distance it built walls to stall the passage of time and the walls kept out everything will the prince come or has the world gone silent while we waited waiting is a transition it has beginning and it has an end waiting is the night morning brings the sun of a new day okay guys angel of love angel of past issues and alone in the world right now some of you guys you're really focused on love in this incarnation you really feel like um you are being i feel some of you guys um like to strip down to your bare bones giving it all putting it all on the line for those around you those that you love and that may not be reciprocated and that's why you have your angel of past love and angel of past issues coming in to help you become more aligned with these energies with um your soul purpose and i believe you're going to be getting lots of synchronicity so if you're getting totems here um different animal totems trinkets or things like that people buying you different jewelry or gems make sure you look into the meaning of that because i believe it can have some spiritual purpose and meaning into your path so i'm going to do a card for each house of the zodiac here first house which is ruled by aries and i have three different charts we can interpret it a couple different ways your first card which is fire energy, right? Nave of fire, definitely. So we have the page of fire here. I feel like you have good news coming um, about love, about a situation here. Some of you guys, this is with the Aries energy. It's about, you know, um, the trailblazer, your independence, your image, how you show up in the world and how people see you right now. So you want those to see you as emotionally fulfilled and complete. And you may feel like you're alone right now and you're just really not completing that task. Um, then we have your second house energy. Which is Taurus. Is my deck upside down? No. <laughs> and I'm going to take the flipper as your third house, which is Gemini. So in your second house here, I definitely see that this is Earth energy. Um, the second house is ruled by Taurus. Where's my wand? Okay. Second house here being ruled by Taurus, but um, the planet, the ruling planet is Venus here. So you have the mirror here, right? I see that you're looking at yourself. You're looking at past situations. Excuse the images on here, guys. This is the sexual tarot. Uh, I chose it because of the size of the cards. They're very tiny, and I can lay them on the paper here without, you know, running anything over. If you guys can see that. Okay. So. All right. Now. I definitely feel like you're looking yourself in the mirror here. You're seeing where Venus could possibly show up and bless you here as long as you take the action. If you're acting on the synchronicities you're getting, you have good news coming in, news you've been waiting for. That's making you take a look in the mirror and look at your life moving forward to the third house, which is Gemini energy, mercurial energy, which rules Virgo as well as Gemini, right? And that's the third house. Your third house energy here is really fixated on um, the talking, communication, and connections here. So I definitely see temperance in your house, your third house of Gemini and mercurial energy is about divinely time, divinely guided things. Um, you communicate very well. You're being guided through synchronicity here and you have the temperance here. 
um, helping you create that perfect elixir, the ebbs and flows of your life, like balancing out things that didn't work. I see past life as well as present. And this energy here is telling me that you're a very good communicator, um, that you definitely have the patience that it takes to communicate the messages that you want to communicate to those around you and in love. And um, let's see if we have any... I don't see any blockages here, you guys. You're getting through the first three houses. Pretty decent. <laughs> Let's keep, continue for Virgo. Okay, so we have your fourth house and your fifth house. I'm going to get all your cards, guys. <laughs> for Virgo, Spirit, Life Path Readings for Virgo. So we have, we almost got the houses filled up, huh? Almost, we got one more, Pisces. Pisces, Pisces. One more, honey. Spirit, what do we have for the 12th house for my Virgo? Spirit said, there we go. <laughs> So let's get through the chart for you guys. Now for four, for the fourth house, guys, that's Cancerian energy, right? Ruled by the beautiful moon, fourth house. What we have there is the king of air here, definitely dealing with a Sag in this energy here. This is the rebel. This is someone that is emotionally detached here. They could be showing up in your fourth house. This is your home. Um, and your area of real estate, for some of you guys, you can be lawyers here. You can be like um, in the real estate business. I definitely see that. But it's about your security and nurturing, um, the natural empath, where empath meets <laughs> king of air. Um, it's kind of beyond me because that's the total opposite of that energy. But yeah, let's continue. Um, so we have the king of air here. I definitely see that you're communicating with family and friends, those around you here, uh, taking your time, being tempered here, definitely allowing the healing and to take place. But when it comes to matters of family, to being bold, to exerting yourself and your emotions here, your security and your need to be nurtured here, I feel that you're unapologetic and you're very well communicating in those areas of life, um, that you have the ability to speak your truth, set boundaries and cl clearly communicate those things that you need, Virgo. Heading into your fifth house here, Leo energy. Leo's ruled by the sun, right? And that is the fifth house here. So with the fifth house in Leo, this is the showman, right? Performance, creativity, the things you are proud of that you want to show off to the world. The sun illuminates things. So the area in your life that's being illuminated is queen of water. It's no surprise that your cards have definitely indicated here you're dealing with past life issues. You have romance that you have missed opportunities and I feel that this is coming back around in your fifth house energy and Leo. You're being blessed with um, good connections and relationships and matters of the heart loving, caring relationships here. This is having a good connection and bond um, with your children, with family, with friends. I definitely see that um, you've been self-sacrificial and wearing your heart on your sleeve a lot but that's going to be returned to you when the sun is illuminated, your feelings and the things that it takes to complete you that you're creating about and when it comes to your performance some of you guys can just really be into the creative arts here and expressive i can see maybe potentially actresses here as well in this house the queen of cups here very passionate and emotional about those areas of life so for the sixth house virgo hey virgo right sixth house virgo right ruled by the beautiful mercury that's more mercurial energy right rules the gemini as well as virgo and that is the moon so the moon rules cancer as well as Pisces. What I see in this energy and here is um, with the moon, it's like the pursuit of efficient efficiency and logic, right? When you have Virgo and the moon, but with the moon energy, it's yeah, like your nurturing and security. It's your subconscious. It's things behind the scene here. So you could secretly be working on things that no one even knows about, like your health, like um, manifesting your wealth through work, through hard work. There could be projects and things here that you feel drawn to. You're having dreams about your creative energy is flowing to you through your dream state. And it's telling you your areas in life that you are to serve your purpose, where you should be and belong at this point. Mercury could be telling you that it's time to travel, to take on local travel here, something new, something different, something that you haven't done before, right? That's good energy because Virgo is all about serving. It's all about the service that you give and being empathic and emotional here. So that's pretty cool. Um, next card here, we have Seven of Water. My Seven of Water falls in 
seventh house, which is in seven, seven. I like that. That's Libra. <laughs> so we have Libra ruled by the beautiful, beautiful Venus. Again, like Taurus, right? The goddess of love, beauty, fertility, abundance, right? Ruling the Libra, the fair balance, justice, house of Libra here. And Libra is all about um, being a peacemaker, creating harmony and balance here. So seven of cups here, areas of your life where you may be confused. You may have illusions about things. I see that Libra wants to help harmonize these connections, these people. If someone is making you an option or has made you an option in their love life in the seven of cups type of energy, which it usually indicates, I see that you are searching for more harmonious connections. This may be something that no longer serves you in this energy. It definitely shows here that um, your person, this could be you, when it comes to this past love that's coming back into your life here, definitely someone that saw you as an option or as a choice before and that could have been what led up to it because it this is your house of marriage and um, equality and balance and when you got seven of cups in that house it's like uh you know your person you could have been in a marriage in the past life and this could be this life for some of you guys you know take the story how it resonates but i definitely see that they saw you as an option or they had many many options and choices all right let's continue so for the eighth house here in scorpio energy scorpio is ruled by the beautiful mars as well as co-ruled by Pluto, right? And that's the eighth house. Your eighth house of the Zodiac represents the mystic transformation and intimacy. So you have five of air in this area. This is telling me for some of you with the past life connections to this energy that in your past, when it comes to your partnerships and your marriage, you had someone that wasn't fair. They had options. They treated you as an option and they may have been doing things behind your back, gossiping, petty, definitely making you feel um, a lot of resentment towards them just because they did not handle you with the same grace as you've handled them i feel for some of you guys um definitely um air energy definitely aquarius energy here this person was very emotionally detached to you and pretty much did what they wanted to do and didn't care how it made you feel it's a very short-lived victory this person has lived out either or is currently living out a cycle of karma here because the thing about this energy is um Karma doesn't miss an address. So when you put that five of source type of energy and mentality out to the universe, wait for it. It's coming back, right? Um, that could have been you and your energy as well in the past life, Virgo. You're not exempt from these energies. I tell it from a standpoint of your person because I'm talking to you, but your energies can be interchangeable. Kings can be queens, vice versa. This can be you or your person you're watching for. This is past life here as well as karmic purpose. So I'm incorporating as much information from the cards that I feel is relevant to that as I can, okay? So we go to the ninth house, which is Sagittarius, right? Rule about the beautiful, beautiful Jupiter, big pimping of the skies, Jupiter, right? All right. So the centaur here, which will be the Sagittarius energy, is four of water. That's four of cups. Um, and when your four of cups falls in your ninth house, which is the house of the philosopher, exploration, healing, and spirituality, I feel like you're unfulfilled, like you're discontent and bored and you're unfulfilled with life. You may be wanting to take on foreign affairs or, um, long distance travel here. I see some of you guys are just really searching for something that you don't currently have right now. Like your life may be good and it may seem okay to someone on the outside looking in, but you have the calling deep within your soul that whatever you're doing currently in this situation is not working out for you, right? And you want change four of cups energy that's discontent that's boredom you're bored with life you can be bored with your person or situation right now right 10 the 10th house ruled by capricorn the goat <laughs> right all right so in the 10th house guys we have knave of water page of cups look at this guy how he just got her he got his damsel and just threw her over the shoulders and he's pretty much having his way with her, right? I like that energy. Capricorn the goat. Who else is going to show up like that than that Capricorn energy? So in the house of Capricorn, the 10th house, this is the planner with discipline and order, right? So I see you have someone here that wants to come in with an offer. They're planning how they're going to sleep you off your feet, how they're going to court you. That's really, really good energy here. That's a cup of love. That's a new cup. It's someone very smitten. This could be a younger person, but this person feels like they want to climb the mountain if that's what it takes to get to you. Being at the house of Capricorn, being Capricorn is the goat. I feel like this person may not even be well prepared for the task at hand, but it's not going to stop them from coming your way, coming towards you and what they want in this lifetime, or if it's already someone you've met in this lifetime, uh, that's your energy for that. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, guys, so for the 11th house, which is the house of Aquarius, right, ruled by Uranus as well as the beautiful, beautiful, what planet is that? <laughs> Excuse me, guys, let me get it together. Ruled by Saturn as well as Uranus. There we go. 
because Aquarius is also ruled by the same planet as Capricorn, right? And Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, right? So for that energy, we have Ace of Cups. Oh my goodness. So the 11th house is other people's kids. Who are other people's kids? The world. Everybody is other people's kids, right? In your 11th house of Aquarius here, I see this is about the revolutionary, right? It's like your social um, change and liberation. This person wants to come forward and take a passionate leap of faith towards you. You have four of water. You have page of water. You have ace of water here in your ninth, 10th, and 11th house, which are very transformative houses. So your person has determined, sorry guys, I'm not looking right into the camera, but I am going to, to make sure your cards show more into the background of the um, cards, the information, making sure I'm staying on key and on point for you guys. So... Yeah, I definitely see here in Aquarius, this person is very risky. They're going to come towards you. They want to take this leap of faith here with this um, and Ace of Cups. Aquarius was the fool in the major arcana. That's a zero card. So it's like hitting the reset button. It's definitely taking a leap of faith, doing something different. This is someone that doesn't follow trends. They set trends, right? So in, in that energy, past life, be it this life, be it you or your person, you're definitely finding love here um, in a situation with someone that's probably not even your usual type of person. You date this person going to be very rare, very unique. They may have like gauges in their ears or like kind of weird tattoos or other body piercings. This is someone that's just way different. Um, they're really cool they're emotional they're very distant as well in that energy in that house so it's maybe someone that's taking a risk of doing something they haven't really done before coming towards you with an ace of cup putting it all on the line for you so please be you know mindful of this person's feelings and for your 12th house last but not least pisces ruled by the beautiful and beautiful neptune as well as Jupiter, beautiful energy. Big pimp in our disguise is back, right? Represent that beautiful Piscean energy. I'm Pisces twice in my chart, so I appreciate that. We have the magician. Ooh. So we have for this one, it's the dreamer, death and rebirth, and ideals here, right? And this energy. Um, definitely, please don't pay no attention to that picture. That is just wrong. <laughs> I'm definitely seeing the magician in the 12th house. This is your daydreams. This is your illusions here. But you also had that card come up in the Seven of Cups here, right? Yeah. You had it come up in the Seven of Cups here for your um, Venus energy, for your Libra energy. So I'm definitely seeing someone trying to manifest spirituality um, growing, you can be very elusive, having forms of escapism here, trying to create your own reality through manifestation because you know you're in tune with your powers, with your higher self. So you know and understand what it's like and what it feels like to um, go through some of these cycles or you're just beginning to awaken to the cycles and what they really are and what they mean for you guys with the full moon energy in Pisces here. I'm going to get you guys a queen of the moon oracle card. All right. Queen of the Moon Oracle card. I can shuffle on camera. I like to do everything on camera so you guys can see me and what I'm doing. Queen of the Moon Oracle. Do we have any messages here for my lovely, lovely Virgos for their karmic life path and purpose reading here? Dealing with past love. Angel of Love is here. Showing love. Working on you feeling alone in the world. Step out of your comfort zone. North Node. <laughs> Powerful message. Hold your vision. Fix the moon. Okay, spirit. What other messages do we have from the Moonology deck? I said, take that one. Full moon in Pisces. Wow. You can't even make that up. Yes, look at that. Period. And we are spirits in full moon in Pisces. Balance spiritu spirituality and practicality. Wow, that's pretty cool, guys. Let me get you guys a. Queen of the Moon Oracle now. That was the um, Moonology deck. Now I have Queen of the Moon Oracle. The masculine. Yeah, your person is coming in right now. Very strong, very masculine in their energy. But I did pick that up here in your signs and your cards with the four of cups. They may be discontent and bored in what they're doing because their mind is so preoccupied with you. I literally legit feel like this person is fantasizing about you in the seven of cups energy being here in the house of Libra. They're fantasizing about being fair and just bringing what they want to the forefront, right? They want to come at you fair and honest. I feel that. With your Moonology cards here, step out of your comfort zone and hold your vision. Look what this means for you, Virgo, is that when you're holding your vision, right, 
um, you're definitely manifesting here under this full moon in Pisces. So learning how to balance spirituality and practicality here is going to be key to your evolution to you moving forward. Um, you're planting the seeds. Imagine your brain being like the soil that you're planting your seeds in, and your thoughts are the seeds. So things that you are planting, they're coming into fruition here. You're manifesting really quickly, I see. So hold your vision and stay true to that that you are wanting to create and try to steer away from that that you are not. I see your masculine is back here showing up. Very masculine, masculine, masculine energy. So this person wants you to know that, you know, they're down for the ride or wanting to do whatever it takes. They're very masculine. That's a manly man type of energy. They just, I feel like pretty much want to show up and show out on your behalf. <laughs> and I'm going to get you guys an angel answers oracle. And then I will be done. I won't pull. No, I'll pull maybe a few tarot. I got a card for each house, but I'm going to do some overall cards for you guys. See if Spirit has any closing messages. For you guys before you know i let you guys go angel answers oracle any messages here from my birthday whoa within the next few months and don't stop abundance beautiful look at that abundance so you guys know you have blessings on the way here you have abundance here Definitely with the magician in the 12th house, you pretty much can create whatever you want. You have extra magical power and alchemy around you during this full moon and Pisces energy. Spirit has shown up and definitely confirmed that for you. Don't stop what you're doing because within the next few months, you're going to begin to see major changes show up in your life. And this person, this masculine, can even show up and come out of the blue. And it could definitely be very, very unexpected for some of you Virgos out there. Okay, I'm going to get you guys a few more show and then I will let you go thank you guys so much let me know if you like this style of my readings or not and i would definitely be able to um get more out for all the signs just trying to do new things and see what works over here for us guys it's for my spirit in me 11 11 10 okay piscean energy again and the empress well wow, okay and the star <laughs> you guys have like I'm going to start here with the Ten of Swords. Most people avoid this card, but I'm diving right in. Ten of Swords here. P and endings, tens are about a cyclic energy. It's about something coming to a completion here. So I definitely feel like your love, your struggles and love and that that you did not have, that that you've been lacking, those days are going to be far behind you. It's going to be over with. Um, that energy is going to be dead in the water. You're going to be stepping into something that's going to be very honest, very truthful, very fair, very spiritually um, aligned like you on your path here. You have Gemini, Libra, Aquarius and Pisces energy here with the Ace of Swords. I feel that your person is coming in to give you some messages that can help you awaken more with the ace of swords right clarity have an epiphanies about who you are about the divine creator that you are in this imprint's energy the stars are aligning on your path right now and on your behalf life is not happening um to you it's happening for you here in the imprint's energy very creative ruled by libra taurus the stars aquarius right so you're manifesting right now you're very creative and your dreams are definitely coming true under the star energy the stars aligning in your path you're healing you're nurturing and your path is divinely guided and protected by the angels and the universe that's a really good energy for some of you guys you're going to be having kids with your person or there's going to be someone you're currently having a kid with or are married to right but i'm definitely seeing this good good energy and flow coming for you guys i hope someone got what they needed thank you all so much don't forget to like share and subscribe any of my messages resonated with you today thank you guys so much i love you to pieces namaste